Uh, so welcome uh, to the workshop uh, about the always operating uh, system. Uh, my name is Petr Špichal and I'm here with uh, Dominic and Miro. We will guide you through the workshop. Uh, just a brief uh, overview of the agenda. We would like to ex explain the vision of the always operating system. Then we would like to do a kind of uh, high level overview of how the things are uh, working and then right jump at the examples to, to show you some tangible, tangible stuff, uh, how things are working uh, so that you can uh, start playing and experimenting with the, with the stuff if you, if you have a laptop with yourself. Uh, but at the start, uh, I will give a word to Dominic for a short introduction. Yeah, thank you, Peter. So I have to stand close to you so we don't lose this. Okay. Um, yeah, operating system CI means we do CI for an operating system. Um, you can see us in, in the Fedora space. Um, Fedora CI, do things there. There's a lot of documentation on the wiki. Um, we try to keep all, of, all this, this public. And internally, inside Red Hat, we have, we're called operating system CI, OSCI, and basically do the same thing. Um, so the vision for us is with operating system CI and always ready is that we don't want to be in a world where we develop things, then say, okay, let's, let's, try, let's stop and, and take this and try to ship it so we kind of stabilize it, test it, and see how it actually works out, and then eventually say, okay, this is a release. Where we want to be is that at any given point, we can say what we have right now is good. So before we say, so instead of writing a new feature and then testing it, we say, it's not actually finished until we've tested it, and we know it works, and we can ship it. So all the way through. And for us in um, operating system CI, that means all the way from the upstream through Fedora. That's the visible part. So we want to make sure that there is a solid connection. That when so when features are developed, you think about the the actual end product where it's going to end up and how it's going to be used, which is a good reminder because. You know, we want users for our software, right? So it's not just about the new features, but seeing how they're used. So we have, uh, you can reach us under the CI mailing list in Fedora. We have the wiki. And um, yeah, we also hang out in Fedora CI um, on RC. And you can re reach out to us personally. And you may have seen things like the CI pipeline. And we work with Fedora infrastructure, for example, um, on the Fedora Rawhide gating, which will apparently be a thing for real this year. So, fingers crossed on that. Um, but, yeah. There are, for, for those of you who've done some package testing in Fedora, um, there was a time, I think it was last, was it last year, where we wanted to introduce testing to all the packages. And there were some, so yeah, some mishaps with, uh, with user experience there. and. So there's, there's some gaps there that we are aware of. But um, I think we've, we've, we've gone through and addressed a lot of those. So there will be kind of a reboot on the user experience this year. And um, yeah, this, this workshop is about if you have questions on how to make things work, how to tie in the systems that you have. Come in. And um, yeah, tie those things together and uh, make sure that we have tests for all the packages. So that's about all the intro I get. I think now we get to, to the real interesting part. Um, so at any point, I think this is more about being interactive. So if you have any questions, just feel free to interrupt. Please do not wait for the end. I know that we're at different levels here regarding where we are with the testing. Um, so we are a couple people here, so we can also spread out and, and answer questions um, directly if you have any. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Dominic. Uh, before, before we uh, do the high-level overview of, of the staff, uh, because the internet connection here is slow and uh, it, it would take some time uh, uh, to start, like prepare your uh, laptop for experimenting, we've prepared some uh, container images uh, for you. So uh, if, you, if you want to experiment, you can, uh, you can just make sure you have Podman or Docker installed on your laptop. 
and then you could uh, you can uh, copy the file uh, from <coughs> from the USB USB key, and then uh, use the command here, uh, the podman uh, podman load to uh, to load the uh, load the image, and then the final final command one to run it in the container. Uh, at the start, uh, Dominic already mentioned like this this portal. So Fedora Project dot uh, org slash wikiCI is the main portal, and from that you will get to everywhere. So uh, if you if you want, you uh, write this into your browser, and on that page you will you will find all the links, including link for this workshop. There is a special pack your uh, project uh, at the bottom of the page. So uh, please bookmark this page and. Uh, you will also uh, find these instructions for copy paste available on the on the workshop page. So uh, now uh, about the vision, Dominic shortly already mentioned uh, uh, what's uh, what, what is our goal uh, regarding not not like waiting uh, with the testing for a later stage, but uh, maybe to uh, pinpoint once more um, operating system CI. What is it about? about those really very big number of uh, packages which are uh, distributed together and uh, we, we would like to make sure that everything works together, together. and uh, this, is, this is very hard uh, as, as, the, as the number of the packages, uh, packages grows. So uh, our vision of the future is that uh, we would have this always ready operating system where packages would be constantly kept in a, uh, in a good shape. Uh, there would be extensive test coverage, which, which would be guarding, guarding the, uh, the features and, and also the integration between the components. And thanks to gating, uh, no change which would cause some problems or breaking some features uh, should not be allowed to be, to, be, uh, to be merged into the code base. And this should uh, finally result in this, that we, we should be able to release new versions uh, much more sooner like, or, or con even continuously. So uh, the, the, <clears throat> the high level overview. So there are three main uh, blocks or pieces of the puzzle which, uh, which make this uh, working. And uh, these pieces uh, consist of little, uh, more little, little pieces which, which implement these different, uh, different features which are necessary. So I will start with the process. Uh, so we start with the standard as interface. Uh, for, for all of these, I will do just a very brief uh, introduction, very brief des description. At and any time uh, you are interested in more details or later during the workshop, we can look into some of these. But we don't want to like, spend uh, half of the time speaking just, but uh, then you can experiment and play. Uh, so the standard test interface specification, which describes how the tests are discovered and then executed. Uh, basically, it says, it defines some uh, basic terms, like what is test, test suit, what is uh, other, other these relevant terms, and um, what files has to be present where in order to be executed for the, for the CI. Then the gating concept, as already mentioned, uh, if there is a change, uh, which, which after tests appears that it is breaking the package or other packages, it should not be allowed to be, uh, to be merged. So the package is effectively get gated uh, before doing some next step in the release pipeline. Notifications, we would like to, uh, there is a federal notifications uh, service which, uh, which can be used to configure what not notifications you would like to receive. Uh, this is uh, something we would like to improve. And thanks to also the consistent for a month of messages, this should allow us to uh, nicely configure uh, from the user experience to receive only what you are interested in. Then the tools section, uh, there is standard test roles, which is something like an implementation of the, of the standard test interface specification. So it's a, it's a bunch of uh, Ansible roles, which makes it easier to, uh, to run the test and provide the output which is expected or uh, <coughs> which is uh, like described by the, by the spec. Uh, we have some efforts around metadata to have uh, some um, efficient way how to store test metadata, pre pre <coughs> preferably directly in the, uh, very, very close to the test code, directly in the, in the, in the Git repositories. Uh, we have a flexible metadata format uh, proposed for that, which has some nice features. Then there's the pipeline, which takes care of uh, 
um, like detecting the changes and after it, uh, it finds out that there is some change, it will execute the tests and prepare all the, all the stuff, but we will speak about that later. And the Pecure, uh, as uh, for, the, uh, for the modern pull request workflow, uh, you probably know um, what Pecure is, something like GitLab or GitHub. Um, and then the, the last but crucial part uh, are the tests themselves. So uh, what test types um, do we expect it should be used in, 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 the, in the Fedora CI? Uh, we believe that most of the tests should, be, should live as close to the co code as possible. So for example, unit tests, for, for them it makes sense to, to have them directly in the, together with the, with the upstream project, directly in, on GitHub, for example. But for when you are like packaging the, uh, packaging the, the component, uh, for Fedora, you would probably like to make sure the basic functionality is okay and th that the component nicely plays together with the other components. So uh, probably this like basic, basic functionality or integration test would make sense, uh, would, would make best sense here. Uh, the test code um, stored uh, directly uh, in the uh, repositories where the spec files uh, live or a dedicated space for, for the test in the test name space or uh, even other, uh, on other places and fetch from there. Um, for the test execution, we will be speaking some and doing some practical steps, so I will skip that for, for now. Uh, mm -hmm, okay. Are you going to talk about the, the environment for the test, like if it is a, a closed town box where you are mm -hmm. inside, or that, that for instance, you could, well, I, I'm thinking of a package uh, where I would like to use device mapper create a device, mm -hmm. if that's possible, that's yes. what, what, what I would have to do uh, to get an environment where I can do that. Just, just, just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can measure it right away, so um, taking over now yeah. uh, the word. <laughs> uh, so uh, like the pipelines I've been speaking of about the CI system that runs actually the test and it, uh, it is hosted in an OpenShift instance, but it runs actually a VM inside the container uh, because it's an unprivileged container. So it's a VM where you have root and you can do basically anything. Um, if that answers your question. It's a VM, so it's, so a, it's, so a, it's a, so it's a, a, it's a, it's a XA64 VM. Virtualized. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a proper VM where you can basically do what you want. Currently, it's only single host, so you can't easily uh, be able to spin up multiple VMs, but I, I believe we will be able to deliver that <coughs> in, the, in, the coming, uh, in the coming year. Um, is that here? So it's, it's kind of really resource pricey. It's a system virtualized VM. Like, we currently don't have any like big performance issues, like given the fact that we have like uh, how, how many components we are testing? 120. So it's, it currently is not a large portion, but we can scale it up. If it's, it's open shift, so it should be easy as adding new nodes, so the scaling up should be easy. Of course, I, I would maybe even just add that we are planning to also support running tests directly in, on, the, on a Docker container, right? If it makes sense, because not all components make sense uh, to test in that environment. Yeah, just, just, just a question, because my yes. test would run in a privileged Docker container as well. Okay. That would be enough, actually. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm wondering a little bit about the infrastructure tomorrow, if you want to use uh, a CI copy. Okay. So, so, yeah, so I'm focusing on the, the infrastructure that we use to host all this stuff. So, uh, so I just want to point out that this is the default implementation, right? So we have the whole, the whole concept of those tests and how they should work and how everything's plugged together. And the pipeline that we have is a default implementation where you can put those if you don't want to worry about it yourself. If you have special needs, you can either work together to extend this or you can hook up a system that you already have so you don't have to necessarily put everything in here. This is really about... This is the default implementation to make it easy uh, to say if you don't want to worry about setting up your own infrastructures, and scaling up, doing, working with, with, uh, with, upshift or with OpenShift or anything like that, then this is what you do. But um, that said, yeah, thank you, Brian, for the, for the mention. Okay, let's continue because the time is ticking. Uh, so uh, we have enabled testing, uh, the, the CI pipeline is actually enabled for all available or stable Fedora uh, releases and also Rawhide. Uh, um, uh, yeah, we're we taking tests from the corresponding branch, so if, if you are testing, uh, if you um, have the test in Fedora 29, they will be executed for a 29 build, even scratch build. 
So uh, it should be working automatically. I, I will show you maybe. <coughs> I will show you how it's, how you can discover that uh, the source code of the pipeline itself is on GitHub. So uh, if you would like to take a look how it works, uh, you can take uh, take a look there. So for the build pipeline, this is testing uh, Koji RPM builds, including Scratch. Uh, those are the links actually to the pipeline. Um, I can I can click it. So currently for the uh, Brew RPM builds, this is the only way how to discover that the testing has happened. Uh, so so if if you build some scratch build and you have the tests uh, there in the disk repository. Uh, here you can find the results. Uh, as you can see, uh, something is running here. And this is, this is the pipeline itself. Maybe I'll just show the artifacts where you can actually discover the tests, how they have been run. Um, so for example, this is a bus that they run some Bicalib test. <coughs> um, going back to the presentation. Oh, yeah, backlinks, I guess. So for each each uh, Fedora version, there is a separate pipeline. Can you go back, please? <laughs> uh, so uh, there is also for uh, uh, a rawhide pipeline there. Also, we have pull request workflow, so it means you can submit a pull request to the disk git, uh, and it will from the PR um, applied to the to the head of that branch, uh, build a so, uh, scratch build, and it will run the test on it. So this is even before you do anything change to the to the production version and. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and it will be on the next slide, the Pager integration itself. Yeah, so this is how it looks currently the integration with Pager. So the, here is a, a pull request to the DIP component here, uh, just for testing. And uh, uh, here, actually here in the flags, are the tests that have been run. Simple Core CI is something not managed by us. Uh, it actually builds the scratch build, but currently uh, we don't use it, and the Fedora CI also builds a scratch build and runs the tests that are there. Uh, even if you add it with a pull request, this test will be run. And we are adding a pending status, so currently you could see only the result once it completed. It could take several times, so uh, we have there now a pull request to loopable, uh, which, is, which is a thing that updates actually the flags according to the, to the messages uh, on Fedora Infra uh, to have the pending stay there. Stay there. <clears throat> to like retest the, the pull request, you can just uh, add a commented CI test and it will rerun in case you would need to rerun it for any, <clears throat> any reason. So there is possibility now for this, uh, for, for the build pipeline to actually get body updates, uh, getting like the body update doesn't get to the testing of stable repos. If you add a gating YAML file to the disk git, there is an example, example here. Uh, for the file component that's currently enabled for Fedora 29. Um, this, is, this needs to be uh, in, in, this, in this form. Uh, both the update push table, this is like an, uh, the event that it should like gate. Uh, there is, uh, you, should, you can change testing. It doesn't need to be pushed. It can't be pushed to the, uh, to the testing repos if the, if the test didn't pass. And this is the name actually of the all of the build pipeline uh, that we currently use. This might change in the future once we uh, go to unified messaging. Currently, uh, you can just copy over this to your uh, Fedora, uh, to your Fedora disk branch, and it will gate those tests that are there in this git. Um, <laughs> okay. And yeah, here is an example. So usually, if you have a boot update, this test gating here is maybe too small. But uh, visually, you see there are no tests required. So there is no gating enabled. But when you have gating YAML file, you can see that actually all tests have passed. So this is a little bit different here. Uh, uh, discovering which test actually gated the package, because in automated tests, there are also several other tests being run by Fedora for a long time, RPM Deplin, and some others. Uh, but uh, <coughs> um, uh, it's not easy to see about which actually gated the package. So that needs to be some improvement there on the UI side. Okay. So standard test roles, as Petr mentioned, is like an implementation of standard test interface. This is basically what the pipeline does. It executes an Ansible playbook. You can basically do anything. The important thing is to conform to the standard test interface uh, standard, I would say. Uh, so you need to create a test log file um, at the end. And uh, there is a current specification says that the Ansible playbook should fail if the test failed. What we are actually wanting to change because of some reasons, we can't distinguish between the test failure and actually the playbook went wrong even before running test. 
Um, but currently, that's the situation. So you can actually run uh, tests directly in Ansible. That's, that's things that people already do. Uh, but you can also use our roles that make it simple to run tests via, uh, via some of the testing frameworks. For example, a lot of Red Hat guys use Beakalib. Uh, then, then we have uh, support for Avocado. Uh, test framework, um, there is a basic role which can just run simple uh, shell scripts, a lot of people use that. And source is a special role which actually doesn't wrap around the test suite, but uh, it actually makes you available the source code. This is handy if you have the test directly, uh, directly in the source RPM and you want to run them for reason, for some reason. <coughs> yeah, and we uh, have uh, test again, different test subjects, like what uh, the build pipeline is running, it's running classic. Test uh, means that you, it's, it's passing actually to Ansible, the tech classic. Um, currently, Atomic is currently not used. It was for the previous pipeline, but currently that is, that is really not used. And I would say that. And for the container, uh, currently we don't have a, a running on the container, container <coughs> uh, uh, on, on, the, on the containers, but uh, it, it might be. Uh, we even want to improve this uh, tagging and stuff with a better. Uh, uh, better way how to specify the metadata for the test and for the testing itself. Hmm? Is it, uh, so here's our main documentation. Uh, if you want to see these are really nicely structured. I think Pedro already mentioned mm -hmm. most of the stuff and I don't need to do anything. Okay. Burn back to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, so uh, with, this, with these links, uh, you will achieve uh, most of the, like uh, if you are new to this concept, you would like to uh, try something. You should uh, find really everything uh, which is necessary on the, either on the first link, which is the, uh, the portal, or if uh, getting started, uh, the quick start guide is a, is a, uh, is a good, uh, good place to start because it uh, nicely lists all the steps which are not necessary, for example, for executing a, a test. So uh, let's jump into, into a running test. How, so if you would like to run a test, um, there is a uh, definition in the standard test interface saying that you would place a, a file which is named tests.yaml uh, under the tests directory in the disk git in the, in the RPM's namespace uh, where spec files uh, lie. And then uh, uh, executing the test is as simple as calling just Ansible playbook on, the, on, this, on this test file. And the quick start guide lists all, the, all these steps. So if you have a, uh, we strongly recommend for the experiments uh, using uh, either virtual machine or running the test in a container because uh, the specification requires that the Ansible playbook is run under root because it, for example, it prepares the environment or whatever is, need, or whatever is needed. Uh, there is a dynamic inventory support there. So uh, using this, you, you, are, you can, uh, for example, test as Miro already mentioned, testing uh, containers or atomic host. Uh, so uh, that's the limitation. So if you are afraid what Ansible Playbook would do on, on your laptop, it's, it's definitely recommended to uh, rather run this into a, a fresh virtual machine or container. So uh, there you would just install, for example, Fed package, standard test roles package, and you are prepared to do the testing. Uh, with the Fed package uh, clone, you would uh, you can just just clone clone the package. Um, uh, package disk git uh, repository, you enter this test directory and you, you call you call Ansible playbook test yaml. And that's it. Uh, as simple as that. So if you have uh, if you have uh, prepared uh, uh, if you have run uh, commands to prepare your uh, container from our USB flash keys, you can you can uh, you can now uh, do this uh, do this uh, testing. Uh, because in the, in the container they are already fetched also the re repositories. Um, so, uh, to give you a couple of examples. So, Mero mentioned there is a basic role uh, which can be used to run a single command as a test. So, uh, if uh, it, it makes sense for, for a component, it, it could be by like packaging and some, some changes might happen in the, in the package uh, or the environment or in the pipeline which is building the RPM package to just make sure uh, the smoke test passes. So you, you can run like, like minus minus help or just very, very, very simple command. Uh, so as, as here, we see the, oh, sorry. So that was wrong, there was a wrong button. So here you see, uh, we use the standard test basic role and uh, there the tags uh, classic means that uh, this is 
This is intended for running, uh, for testing a classic, uh, classic system, uh, not, not inside container or, or atomic host. And uh, we list the tests. Uh, there is a smoke test, a directory which should be entered before test execution is, is the current directory. And we run this command. The, the, this is just a command line tool for gathering all your reports for the, for the last year. And there is uh, <coughs> like integrated a simple test, uh, smoke test, minus, minus test, which does this report uh, from GitHub for the last year. And at the end, we, we, we do just require packages. Are, are, uh, it's, it's, it's only one simple package you did. And Ansible playbook, together with the standard test roles, will take care of everything. Install required packages, prepare the system, make sure everything which is needed on the system is installed. Uh, or if there are some extra packages which would conflict, they would be removed. And it, it runs the test. So uh, that's the very simple example of a, of a basic law. Then uh, another example uh, from real life, uh, I, I think a very, uh, very nice success, for, uh, success story. It's from Python. Uh, Milo Hronchuk started to play with it a couple of months ago, and uh, we reached this, uh, this state where uh, there is a test repository for Python, uh, and because there are multiple components, uh, like multiple versions of Python, there's, uh, there are also some additional packages which are related to, to, to Python, uh, many modules and such. Uh, but for this example, there is a simple smoke test, which is called virtual, virtual env, and it resides in this shared test repository. Uh, using these, uh, mm -hmm. this line, this repository is fetched, and then uh, the smoke test uh, is executed. And it's executed, for example, in this case, for two Python versions. And uh, you, you, could, you, could, you could use it uh, for uh, testing various uh, mo more combinations. Uh, here, uh, if you, if you, link, uh, if you uh, click on the link in the examples, so this is another, uh, the page on CI slash examples, there you would see that there are multiple components uh, covered uh, by this, it's, it's about, I don't know, 10 or 12 uh, Python related components covered by this single test, which is, which is quite, quite simple smoke test for the virtual and functionality. But it very nicely covers uh, all these components because uh, it's stored in a separate namespace and it's referenced from multiple places. So you maintain only one, uh, one copy of the test. Then I jump at the Beakerlib role. So um, as Miro mentioned, we have uh, lots of tests uh, written in Beakerlib uh, in the BaseOS uh, Basis team, so, so for the BaseOS uh, components. And uh, we wanted to be able to execute them very easily. So this uh, Beakerlib uh, test row has been implemented, which allows um, only list tests which should be run. And everything else, uh, the standard test rows take care of. So it, uh, it checks the required packages, it, it stores the packages, and uh, investigates these directories with the Beakerlib test and executes them. So that's about the clip example, uh, how it would look like. And this is something from real life. So this is a bash example. Uh, bash uh, is one of five uh, shells, which are the POSIX, are POSIX compliant. And uh, again, it makes sense to have a uh, test for them shared in a single uh, common, common repository and, and use them, and use them uh, from that place. Uh, here, uh, again, repositories fetching the tests from this shared repo, uh, destination folder, and here a new thing which, uh, which was not there uh, last year. It's a flexible metadata filter. It allows uh, if the number of the tests grow, if the number grows, uh, then instead of listing a like, very, very long list of tests which, be, which should be run, uh, you would use uh, the metadata, which are stored directly with the tests, and uh, from there, uh, using the, the FMF tool, you would select, I would like to run only tier one and tier two tests, uh, which are relevant for the, classic, for the classic test subject. So that would save you, uh, save you updating, updating uh, if you add a new test, then uh, adding this uh, to the list of tests which would be run to multiple repositories, for example. And now, uh, one more example, which is demonstrating the standard test source role. So here you say only, you apply the, the source 
tags always means it, it will be run for all the test subjects. And uh, it takes care of uh, extracting the source, uh, extracting the test from the, from the package source, sources. And then uh, uh, the standard is basic role, just executes them, uh, as you see here, source tools and then tests. And, and, the, and you run the smoke. So you even uh, can, um, you, you don't have to copy, copy the tests into the, uh, this Git repository or store them elsewhere. They can, as, as you have them packaged in, in, the, in the source RPM. Now, Shor mentioned about the clip. Uh, if you would be interested in writing some, uh, some tests for the operating system, which, uh, which mean like integrating multiple components, starting services, and doing stuff like that. So this shell level uh, integration testing library could be, uh, could be uh, a good choice. It has some nice functions, supports journal and phases to make it uh, very clear uh, where the problem was, like in the, with the system setup or, or the test itself, or, or only cleanup. Uh, there's some link to uh, documentation. And if you would like to experiment and create your simple test, Beaker test, you, you just run Beaker Wizard tool, which will ask you several questions, and then, you, then you, uh, the result is a, a, a complete test with everything, with everything defined. So that was a couple of examples and the overview. And now we have uh, roughly about 20 minutes to uh, do some experimenting. So uh, uh, we are here. Petr, Mero, uh, Dominic, and also we have uh, here Bruno and Andre, uh, who who are willing to help you uh, with whatever you would like to. If you have any questions, or start experimenting with that, so even you could you could try to, uh, for example, take a component uh, and try to do a smoke test for that component, uh, which would be like calling a single command, uh, single command. Uh, and such, okay. Yeah, I would just have a question. Did everybody know how to use the container image or not? <laughs> it was in the, there was a link there, so in the, in the if you, uh, if you run the container in, in the root folder, there is a test directory and there are actually, there, there were uh, checked out repositories for two components. Selenium, uh, <coughs> Selenium twice is not a very good uh, example there. As the root's a, home directory, so you want to say CD, Slash, and I was looking around in the slash. So, text C. Sorry for that. So, here are the instructions. Uh, if you found the, the link, so after preparing the image, uh, you, can, you can run it like this. And then, as just mentioned, you, uh, you, can, you can directly uh, CD to, to the home directory and tests subdirectory and there is Python 3.6 uh, tests uh, already already downloaded and then with Ansible playbook you would you would run them so that's the command uh, so here we have the tests uh, we try uh, let's try the path the Python 3.6 and we call Ansible playbook uh, Python 3.6, uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> uh, Ansible playbook test <coughs> Yeah, we keep the caches and everything there, so the download is minimal. So there are some so common, common tasks which are, which, are, uh, which are done for all, the, for all the roles, for example, making sure that the required packages are installed on the system. Then uh, there are some uh, additional steps which make sure, uh, for example, if the tests have some special required packages for, for individual tests, the roles w would make sure that all these packages are installed, like here, install test specific package requirements. We see, we, we see the GCC Python 3.6 rsync and Python 3 talks, and do some other steps. And uh, then finally, when the environment is ready, you would execute, it would execute the test. Uh, so the specification says, as Miro uh, said, if the tests pass, the Ansible playbook should, should return uh, zero as return code without no, uh, with no problem. Uh, we see here that uh, there were some changes on the, on the system. Some uh, and uh, the, the final the final result was okay. So 24 tasks uh, were okay, 
And here in the directory, we would see directory artifacts. Uh, and here uh, uh, you see the test log, which is required by the specification to have a like, uh, uh, output of the tests. Uh, and test roles are, are quite uh, concise here. They, they just do here uh, how the, the result of the testing. Uh, so I have here twice the result because I have run it already once. And in the in the past, uh, sorry, there's not BIM. In the past, uh, str smoke log, you would find the uh, the complete log of running the test. So here, uh, if there is any problem or anything, you could have a look here. You could have a have a look here for for more details. So now, if we jump, uh, if we jump to Bash and run Ansible playbook, so. Uh, the page suggests uh, you could you could uh, you could run uh, run it uh, with uh, minus minus text container. Uh, so this uh, I will show you how it looks like. So the test demo looks like this. There are some tests uh, relevant for the classic uh, test subject, and there are some different tests for these. The difference is uh, in the FMF filter. So from the from the test, will be selected only those. Which, have, uh, which are tagged by container or atomic. So if I run Enzyme playbook, minus minus text container, uh, and I'm running in the container, so uh, we would get <coughs> only those tested tests which are relevant um, to the container environment to be executed. Uh, also, this was the case uh, of the shared repository. So the, the role will, will also take care of fetching, fetching the test from, from the uh, test repository and then, uh, and then actually um, exploring the directory for available tests, applying the flexible metadata from a filter, uh, selecting appropriate tests and running them. So here we see installed test specific package requirements. Some additional uh, dependencies which are missing <coughs> are changed and installed. So the, these tests are using Bclip. There are some packages, uh, some requirements are already installed in the system. Any questions maybe if you have, so we are free here to discuss, right? Yeah, so that will be 
you're using the standard test rules, that will be a pull request against the standard test rules, um, which you can also, the standard test rules are easier to test on a local machine. So you can um, the maintainer of that is actually sitting behind you. I'm yeah, I have some, some patches in there already. Yeah, Although, so. yeah I mean, I can fill a whole story about this, but I sort of gave up on it for OS treatment, how it's just cancelable and rebooting. Just but people are actually doing that already. They, they are but, playing. Uh, I don't know if they get yeah, well, but it, it's like a worker before. <coughs> yeah, so. I may investigate again. Okay. Yeah, so usability is, is a pain point, especially with the uh, Ansible verbosity. That's, uh, but I think that's actually being worked on, the, the log output. So I think uh, once we have that first thing in place, it might be easier to iterate on that. Yeah, it's like the, the puzzle is really con consists of, of many, 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 many little pieces. Uh, this this uh, wiki portal uh, I should list most of them. So if you if you know where to look, you can you can directly, uh, for example, I don't know, you would find a, a bug in the in the metadata format. So you would you you can you can find some information here and link for for, for the GitHub repository where to file issues. Uh, or if you are not sure, you, you just know, don't know, uh, it's possible to file a, a general issue here uh, in the contact section. So there is, there is this Pegur Fedora CI uh, general project and we, uh, we gather uh, issues which are like gener gener general, um, uh, we track them there. And if we know uh, where to redirect, then uh, we, can, we, we can help you uh, with that. So here I just I just executed uh, just so so you know so FMF uh, list uh, when I entered this this is a shared test uh, shared test repository for for the shell tests we have there just uh, three simple um, tests as a proof of concept and uh, you would be able here to uh, select tests uh, uh, based on the for which component they are relevant or if they have some tag. Uh, yes. So this this is uh, for this for this part. FMF show will, will show you all the metadata uh, for for a particular test case. So for example, for this login, you see what is the component, uh, uh, what what the test does, how it takes, uh, how long it takes to to complete and such. So for the improve for the future improvements, uh, we have several ideas. Um, um, the test YAML uh, does not so sound to us like uh, extensible enough. We would like to uh, we would like to introduce a new format which would allow us to define uh, more in more detail uh, which tests should be run in what point of the release pipeline. For example, we would like to do some very very basic test uh, for the pull uh, for, for the pull request ex itself. So you would say there's a pull request, check the code, run the pylint on it, and make sure there are no errors or something like that. You would run, maybe you would like to run a different set of tests for the for the scratch build, which is created from this pull request. Then uh, when when the pull request is merged and the real build is is created, and now is the question: Should this be merged into the compose or not? Uh, then you you could define some additional test coverage, which should be executed and make sure that. Uh, some maybe integration tests are uh, run against this package, uh, which would make sure that it does not break other packages which are relevant to that. <coughs> so this is this is the very very fresh uh, very fresh thing. The CI FMF we have a pull request just with the initial set of examples how uh, how it could look like. Uh, just to get give you a brief idea. So for example, the last one uh, defines somehow uh, how to discover tests. So you you could use like list the test or use the FMF. Uh, you would, you could have some uh, requirements for the for for the hardware. Uh, you can do some extra setup steps on this. Then you would uh, select which which tool should be uh, used for the execution of the test. And uh, in each of these steps, you would be able to uh, say, okay, so um, I'm using um, uh, just a plain text file for listing tests, which should be done. I'm listing. I'm using FMF for getting the information, or I I, uh, I stick with the old TCMS where I have like thousands of tests, so I will I will um, use it there. And here we here we would would say, for example, so for the build, 
We would like to run smoke tests. That would be tier one and uh, and uh, tech functional some some basic tests for for that one. Once we once we do an update like body update or errata, uh, we would la we would run this on uh, all the ar architectures which are supported. We would run additional tiers and we would do a separate okay thanks separate uh, <coughs> test job uh, only with security tests so that they are like they finish as soon as possible so that we can make sure there there, there are no security issues in that so so make uh, some some improvements in this area I would just add that maybe this is, this is coming from real um, user stories that for example uh, our the developers as you have for example selling policy is distributed as a bunch of components right it makes sense to like test them together at body update. So there is a real use case when you run some tests only with all these packages together so that this should make it flexible enough to be able to execute those tests. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, it kind of along those lines, and maybe this isn't, maybe I just lost track of how the testing process works for Fedora, or maybe this isn't the right place to do that. Um, but, you know, for critical path packages mm -hmm. in automation, um, is there a way to use this system to, uh, you know, say I do a network manager update and I want to make sure mm -hmm. that Currently, we're not targeting that, but basically, we would like to also have like compost level test or, or some. Yeah. So that definitely, this should make it possible. Of course, maybe it will be not in this Git because this is not completely component centric. It could be in you know, some other Git repository, but that's what we are looking for. But at least hooked in through the system We would like also to make some like consistency by by uh, defining uh, defining how the uh, how the Fedora. Uh, how the message message format, which is which is uh, which is shared on the UMB, uh, should uh, how we should contain there the information about whether the tests passed or or failed, also to make make this consistent and uh, if possible also make this consistent upstream and downstream, so that we could uh, use the similar or same same tooling for processing the messages or emit, emitting the messages. I will have to do this is started for the tester um, test progression and test results, but we are looking into also for the gating event themselves. To have a consistent format downstream, upstream, uh, for the messaging, even for the whole release pipeline. So, if somebody introduces a new build system, we would like to standardize the format so it's not a mess like with all the other, all the different build, build systems for, for the time they were created. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit messy in the messaging format, so we are trying to standardize that. Um, and onboarding maybe later on the legacy systems also. Um, yeah. Yeah, Peter is showing something. Mm -hmm. uh, when you kick tests locally off, uh, can you use tell it uh, which of these, these well, uh, you just said uh, you can specify which tests should be run on, on the bar when, when it's verified in Boogie. Mm -hmm. um, that's just coming, that's just that. I, I can tell, uh, try these tests. And kind of the same question, if I'm not doing it locally, uh, I can do, without committing anything, I can add the test YAML uh, and, uh, and do a, uh, a scratch build uh, minus minus SRPM that would work as well. So if you build a scratch build, it, uh, currently the pipeline set up that it build, picks up also scratch builds and run the tests according to the this git. Also, also if the if, if it is a minus minus SRPM scratch build, where actually there there is nothing really in the repo, that's fine mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you create a pull request uh, with this test channel. So even if the test, if, if it's not, not if, if there's nothing in the git, and you just create the test, uh, the pull request, which would contain this test YAML, like for, for the test execution, it, the job would be run. So maybe. maybe yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. but maybe the, I didn't understand. But for that, I would have, have to commit it to my local repo. And, uh, so the question is, if I just add the file to my local file system, which is of course a clone of whatever, mm -hmm. uh, and kick off. Uh, uh, scratch build with minus minus SRPM, it would uh, it would build what's in my local file system without that I have to mm -hmm. to commit anything, try to push anything. Mm -hmm. uh, can I still kick off these tests? No, from your local currently no, like this, like we, we, that, that is a use case that is currently like not supported. The test need to be in this git committed or or, you, or in a pull request. But you, so you, you could run yeah, like you could test it locally because you, you just create yeah, a file. Well, I can still do uh, like this. I can still do a build 
on the uh, rural area. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it just creates for my local files the SRPM and uploads the SRPM, and that is, that is uh, built on the official build system. Uh, the question is if, if it would as well work uh, if that has a test YAML. No, because this is this is based on the test YAML like stored in the in the Git repository. Because or, like or submitted as a pull request. If it's on your local mm -hmm. because the, the so tests are not packaged it into that, the. It would never pull it out of my SRPM. It, it's not packaged into source RPM. That was maybe not clear. If it's in this Git, it's not packed in the in the source okay. RPM in the build. So maybe that is a confusion. Maybe didn't uh, explain that. Okay. But we can elaborate okay. after. Yeah. So so we are out of time. So. So thanks for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we are still uh, here, so you can reach us. Thank you.